the luggage pile hastily packed last night. Definitely haven't got a big enough suitcase. Hi guys, I'm Cara from Cara Lee Ford Ceramics. I'm traveling 3,000 miles from my home in Somerset in the UK to the Inseca Conference in Richmond, Virginia. I love travel and to get to do it for my job is an absolute privilege. I'm in Richmond. I made this video to document my first time at Inseca to show you guys what it's all about and to help others know what to expect at their first time. NCCA stands for National Council on Education for the Ceramic Arts. It's a non-profit organisation that fosters global education and appreciation for the ceramic arts. NCCA advances creation, teaching and learning through clay in the contemporary world. Morning Richmond. What a beautiful morning. Here's my room. Nice. Okay, so I'm breakfasted and I have a little rucksack full of things I need for the day. I'm gonna head and find the convention center. Inseca, I'm ready for you. Inseca is an annual conference and is held in a different state every year. Crush Hotel. Over 6,000 potters attended this conference from all over the states and the wider world. There's a huge resource hall with hundreds of brands and artists for you to see. You can see the latest wheels, kilns, tools and glazes. You name it, it's here. Just to let you know, this video is not sponsored and I only highlight just some of the cool things that I saw. There were so many others. So, BJ is just going to explain a little about the jigger. Yes, so this is our jigger arm. What you're going to do here is you're going to make a mold, let's say for a plate. Uh -huh. You make a plaster mold yep. and then make a profile for the bottom of the of the plate. Yep. And then you take your jigger arm, get uh, clay on your mold, yep. turn the wheel on, and then bring the jig back down so it can uh, cut the profile for the bottom of the plate. Wow, right. awesome. Yeah. And that would speed up production like it would. tenfold. It, 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 you're making something that is an exact copy. So these are the hydro bats. Um, they're made of a mixture of plaster and cement. So they're actually much more robust than normal kind of potter's plaster. Um, but they're very cool, so handy to make plates with. So they have those bat pins on the bottom, which just slip over your regular bat pins on your wheel. And it means that plate making is just super, super easy. Um, there's no wiring required. You literally just throw to the depth that you, that you want, um, which means that there's less wastage. Um, you potentially don't even need, need to uh, create a, a foot if you don't want to. Um, they have them in all these different sizes. And these can be used with a jigger. So the jigger that I showed you earlier, these are the kind of uh, plate molds that you would use with, with that. Um, and they even have like big platters as well. Very, very cool. And they also have this awesome like glaze material cabinets, which would just look wicked if you made your own glazes and you needed to store them. So yeah, check out the ceramic shop. As well as all the brands that are in Inseca, there are loads of universities and schools and craft centers and creative places that come and have booths here. So if you're thinking of studying uh, ceramics or clay or pottery, anything related to that, then you could come here and chat to these guys and talk to them about their programs. Um, and it's a really great way of kind of uh, finding out who does what, uh, what they offer, and whether they're right for you. In Sika day two. Okay, so if there was in any doubt that I am a genuine potter, can I just draw your attention to this button and the amount of clay 
<laughs> that is like wedged underneath the button. Okay, so I am on my way to the conference center. Uh, today is a fully packed day of talks. Um, there is a business development talk that I'm really interested in this morning, then a Japanese throwing technique talk uh, or demonstration. Then I'm going to watch my friend Rebecca um, doing her talk, which is all about photography. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a really fun and I'm sure exhausting day. Trees are in green, the ocean is grey, sky is a vague blue, come my way. My room is a mess, it could use a hand. My favorite TV shows to capture in. I know I must get it right, I must get back in the fight. This can't be. The conference is made up of three days of talks, demonstrations, lectures, panel discussions all from top artists, potters and business people throughout the industry. It's a little bit like Glastonbury, but for potters. Zika have created an app which shows you everything on the agenda. We have nothing of a similar size and scope here in the UK, and I don't even think in Europe. Let me know in the comments below if you know of any other pottery conferences I should visit. Inseeker hosts an annual cup exhibition and sale. This is a fundraising event where the organisers invite potters and artists at all levels to donate a cup. The proceeds of the sale supports the Inseeker Fund for Artistic Development, which is designed to provide opportunities for artistic growth through scholarship, residencies and programmes including the Regina Brown Undergraduate Fellowship. This was the cup that I donated. Artists donate their cup from Wednesday through to Thursday and then the sale opens on the Friday. The queues when the cup sale opens often go outside the building. If you want to do this, it's a really good idea to bring business cards to put them next to your cup so people can identify it's yours. Some of the most unexpected things I discovered at Inseeka were off the main beaten track. They were the pop-up exhibitions by local galleries, hotels, cafes, and even breweries like this one. The conference organizers do a really good job of spreading out the attendees and encouraging them to learn from and engage with the local community. Hey everybody, so I'm at the Autumn Desk at Inseeka. And these guys, you need to know about these guys. You need to know what cones are, why you should be putting them in all of your glaze firing. Okay, so this is Mary and this is Thomas. Hello. And they work at, at Orton. Um, so guys, okay, these are cones here. What am I looking at? Can you kind of just give me like your elevator pitch on what is a cone? A cone is a tool that can be used by ceramic artists to ensure that their pieces and their glazes are reaching the correct temperature and heat work so that they can get consistent firings time to time. In the US, we do a lot with turkeys around Thanksgiving. Right? Yeah, yeah, well, when yeah. a turkey is done, a little thing pops out of yep, it. Well, we yep. call these the turkey thermometer of ceramics. Amazing. Well, why would I use these in my kiln? So they are designed to bend over when they have reached that window that is what they're designed to bend in. Yeah. And that's a very small window. When you fire, you're relying on a thermocouple a lot of times, and that is a electronic signal that is sent to a controller. And it's reading a single point of time, at, and it's not telling you what's actually happening throughout the total heat work cycle. A cone is made from the same materials that you're going to be cooking in your kiln. So they will react and perform the same way. They will have the same heat work. Are they vitrified? Are they in that right absorption level? Yep, yep. Did the glaze get the right glossiness? Are they mature? Are they mature? So one really super cute thing that happens at Inseeka is that lots of artists make really tiny little portable um, trinkets to give away to people just like as you're walking around. So this is from Becca Otis. This little bird is from Emily Russ. How cute is that? And this little tooth is from someone and I can't remember their name, but I will find out and I'll put it underneath. I definitely want to do this next year. This is 
what you get in your Inseeker bag. It's mostly kind of advertising, um, but there is uh, some really interesting things that I spotted that I wanted to um, look more into. You do get a map and a program schedule, which is kind of useful, but if you have the app, then you don't really need that. I also got an Inseeker catalog, um, which contains loads of amazing artists. I am going to try and take this back in my bag, however it's quite big and quite heavy, so um, hopefully I can get that back. But yes, so don't be surprised if you end up with loads of business cards at the end, um, which is strange because obviously everyone's on Instagram now, but uh, I still brought some business cards with me and I actually took some business cards away with me because it it's actually a really nice kind of a memoir when I get home just to um, check these people out and um, go and look at their website. It's a reminder to go and get to know them a little bit better. So I actually really like that. So don't forget to bring business cards. tired hey guys so I'm all packed up and ready to go you're gonna have to excuse my voice <laughs> I think everyone who goes to Inseeker basically expects to lose their voice by the end of it because you're just talking chatting and getting to know people the whole time so I am gonna get my flight back to the UK today um, I just wanted to kind of sit down and talk you through a few things that are fresh in my head while I am here because I know by probably by Sunday when I get home things will fall out of my brain if I don't sit down and record them now. Wow, Inseeker was just amazing. I loved every minute. There was loads that I didn't get to see but I don't think it's realistic to think you're going to get to see everything and meet everyone that you wanted to meet just because it's so big and there's so much going on. Yeah, that's never going to happen. There's loads of things that I'm going to take away from my first time at Inseeker. I think the main thing is that everyone is so lovely. Everyone in the whole place, they're all potters, right? And if you're watching this, you're probably a potter and you know how lovely that community is and Inseeka is no different. Everyone is so welcoming and will just chat. So don't be afraid to turn around to the person sat next to you. Everyone's wearing a lanyard so you can see their name and introduce yourself and just say, hey, what do you make? Are you a potter? Are you a teacher? It really is such an easy place to get to know people because you immediately have a connection through pottery. Also, I wish I'd brought a, a bigger checked bag um, because there was lots of things that I could have brought home, but I didn't have the room. I don't know what I was thinking with things like tools. Um, you know, there's some kind of like sharper tools that you might want to put in your checked luggage that you wouldn't be able to take on your hand in your hand luggage. Um, so that is one thing to think about. I really enjoyed being in a hotel that was quite close to the action because then I could just knit back, um, you know, get a sweatshirt, dump my bag, um, and then go back out again. So I, I really liked that. In the conference center in Richmond, they didn't really allow you to bring in your own food and drink. Um, I'm not sure how strict they were about that because I took in a bottle of water with me every day. Um, probably water they're not quite so strict on, but basically they kind of want you to buy the food in the conference center. I didn't do that, I went out every day. Um, I also made the most of breakfast at my hotel um, because that was included in my room. So I just really stocked up on breakfast in the morning, kind of just had a coffee and a snack for lunch and then went out for dinner with um, new friends that I met. There's always going to be so many good options around about um, in the local town, local area. 
So do think about that and, um, you know, ask the locals, ask where they would recommend to go for lunch or go for dinner. And there's always some really great spots to try out. And if you're anything like me, when I'm traveling, food is like such an important thing. So I really wanted to try some local food, local restaurants, and really get a feel and a taste of Richmond itself. Inseeker does lay on um, a shuttle bus, which comes around to a lot of the main hotels that are in the kind of immediate vicinity and picks people up and takes them straight to the convention center. Um, I didn't use that because I really like walking and I wanted to just kind of like be outside for a bit because when you're in the conference center, you're inside all day and it's really nice to be outside and just to like see the sun. <laughs> it was a chance for me to kind of like decompress after the day as well. So I really liked my little walk back to the hotel and the area that we were staying in was really safe. But if you struggle to walk or don't feel safe, then there is the shuttle bus option. I guess the bus would also be a really great place to start chatting to people and to get to know people. I met my friend Sarah in the queue as we were queuing up to actually get our tickets and get our like um, our bags to go in. Um, I just saw her, she was behind me, she was on her own. And I just introduced myself and just said, hey, are you here on your own? Do you wanna be friends? <laughs> yeah, we basically hung out the whole time and she was so lovely and I'm so glad I met her. I also met up with Pottery Club member Liz. You will absolutely meet friends for life at Nzika. I was sat in a talk and a lady who was sat next to me, she kept kind of like looking over and then she said, excuse me, Kara. And I was like, that's a British accent. And she was from my home county in England. How crazy is that? Her name is Jodie and she was such a blast. I absolutely loved meeting her. We all exchanged WhatsApps and I know I'm gonna meet back up with her when I go home to the UK. So yeah, be prepared to make new friends. Inzika is so inspiring. I felt like after every talk, I wanted to rush back home to my studio and try out the thing that I've just been watching on stage. Um, and I really hope I remember everything. Obviously I had my phone, so I was able to take some little um, videos and I had a notebook as well. Notebook is a really good idea just to jot down some things that will kind of like help you remember what you saw when you were here. I kind of feel like I wish they had like a breakout room that had a whole bunch of wheels set up that you could just go and just kind of like try out the things that you just seen demoed and that would really help them kind of stick in your mind. Just an idea for you in Seeker there. There was so much info and so so many amazing techniques and processes that I saw. So I'm really excited to get back to my studio and go and try some things out. Would I go to Inseeker again? 100%. In 2025, it's going to be held in Salt Lake City. Let me know if you're going in the comments below. I will see you there. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and drop it a like. Thank you so much. Bye bye.